Dr. Harry Barry, there's nothing new in burnout. Uh, yeah. You say this is this is endemic I in think society. It's well, the first thing I think is, yeah, what is about burnout? What is burnout? Everybody's Tell us about the using traits. the term, but nobody's ever describing. Uh, burnout is where we, we experience what we call toxic stress or chronic stress, which is present consistently for a greater period than three months. So that we, pretty well at the moment, I would say there's very, very few sections of our society uh, you know, mothers, carers, young people, older people, uh, that really weren't hammered by the last two years. On top of, an, in my opinion, we were living lives of quiet desperation in many cases. There were a lot of mums living lives of quiet desperation. So I think toxic stress is really where we're exhausted, we're demotivated, uh, where we're, we're tired but wired, we're not sleeping, we're not eating properly, we're not exercising. We're getting consumed by technology. We're drinking too much. Uh, we're irritable with those we love. We're, we, we're not enjoying life. And we sometimes nearly become apathetic, hopeless. Mm -hmm. uh, and all of these things, I think, it, everybody out there, uh, I often say when I'm talking to groups, hands up anybody who doesn't feel like this. Do you know what I mean? Because so many of us felt like that. The, obviously, the medical, the f medical service has got absolutely hammered. But right across the whole spectrum of society, uh, burnout is present all over the place. And, and burnout you know, was present before, before the Before it, but it has really been consolidated. And I think there were many groups who were just about coping, particularly mums, you know, families, young families who were just about coping, and this just tipped them over. Mm -hmm. And I think we all have to start talking about it. The mental health effects of that are, are quite uh, significant because people are going to get more anxious, there's more depression, there's more self-harm, there's more alcohol misuse. And we're not talking about these things. And it's, it's a quiet uh, bubbling, uh, you know, underneath the surface. You know, you can do all your surveys, but you're, you're not going to find a lot. It's going to start bubbling up to the surface, I think, over the next period. Il Ilona, um, from your perspective, what you're hearing, what we're hearing there from Harry um, about that, that burnout and all the traits that are involved there, did you see many people coming into the family practice or even talking to them remotely because that's the way it had to happen for such a large amount of, of, of the past two years? Um, talking about those stresses, uh, did you see how it manifested itself in families? We've seen many, many, and every day in general practice, these are the type of presentations we're seeing. And yes, they definitely are on the rise. And I suppose there's that sense that we're coming out of things now, and therefore there's an expectation, oh, well, sure, it'll be all right now. But I think the reality of it is this chronic anxiety and stress has been there for some period of time. And many people suffering in silence, not being able to come and talk about it, not being able to access services that they need. So we're actually seeing a further rise at the moment, because again, even that return to normal, I mean, for, for almost two years, people have been told, stay away from others, stay at home, limit your contacts and now we're telling you it's okay you can go back to work you can you don't have to worry about anything anymore and I think that's also creating its own anxiety yeah. so we we now need to look at how do we move forward and how do we do something about it and I think that's where this review post-COVID that's been undertaken by the HSE has not just to be about the acute response but it's also about the learning and the areas especially we know all of healthcare is struggling with regards to resources but specific areas such as mental health access to psychology etc. That's so vital and will be all the more important now. Yeah, uh, Katrina, you know, I'm struck by that, you know, in the past um, few week, few days since the announcement around the lifting of restrictions, while there's relief, there's also that uh, anxiety yeah. and uncertainty about what's ahead, especially if you're in a remote working environment, you're working from home, and now you're kind of trying to navigate your way through the lifting of these restrictions and getting back to the way things were. Yeah. And that readjustment probably, you know, ramping up your life again in a way. Yeah brings its own difficulties, doesn't it? Does. It does, and I, I think, and it was interesting to hear what Harry said and Finian. One thing that we saw, and, and as, a, as a working mother myself, I, I remember at Christmas time, just gone, there was, a t there was talk of the schools maybe not opening, and I remember sitting at my kitchen table and, and just crying. And I, and I don't have a child with special education needs or an elderly parent that I need to, to worry about might get COVID. I have a pretty healthy family, and we're, but I remember sitting there thinking, I cannot 
do this again. I and I, you know, I'm quite resilient. And I and now that we're we're moving back, I'm talking to other women, other professionals, other academics, and and a lot of them are saying we're going to work from home, a hybrid model, because it's easier for them to keep doing everything. And so I I, I really do hope that there's a chance for us to really make proper decisions and slowly move back and respect each other and what we need. I, I definitely agree. Mm. In our interviews, we, we had mothers who were caring for children with special education needs, dyslexic children, who, they'd lost their places in schools. We really need now to support those people who've missed out on not only two years of services, but also two years of, of being able to flourish. Benin, did you reach those points, um, those points that really, as a family, you thought, how will we get through this? How will we... We, we cope with all of this, those very low points that, that we've spoken about. Oh, yeah, I mean, would, my first thing, though, that I, what I always say is that you have to focus on, in my case, the person with the disability. So the three things that jumped out at me during the COVID was uh, anxiety, loneliness and sadness for the person with disability. And then when I was talking to other parents right across our disability community, that was the constant theme coming across. So then, but in relation to myself as a full-time care, yes, there are times when you kind of go into that uh, space and it is very difficult, but I'd always be kind of looking for the positive as well. So I began to come up with strategies as well to do different things, to, deal, to keep myself busy, keep my daughter busy. But at the same time, the joke was, there's only so many times you can go for a walk with your daughter in Clontarf and she doesn't get fed up with you. <laughs> So there are situations <laughs> like that. And then, of course, once I, I ended up in an A&E uh, in the middle of the COVID as well. And uh, the funny part of it just shows you the resilience of some people with disability. My daughter has Down syndrome. And when we arrived in the A&E, she brought her phone with her because coming on at half ten was her Zoom class coming from Prosper Fingal Service to teach her her dance class oh. was coming on Zoom. Yeah. So she was in the, in, 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 in the unit with the two nurses trying to get the veins to set her up and she had the thing ready and she was watching 20 past 10, 25 past 10. As soon as half 10 came on, she puts on the things and she starts doing the shapes and the two nurses just had a, a, a roar. In it. But it kind of showed the resilience. There she was, a young woman with intellectual disability. She wanted to, not to miss her dance class. And so it shows the resilience and yeah. the positivity and bravery that a lot of them had. But just to go back to the point about Alona mentioned about the review, I, I think it's important as well that when the review is done, we focus on make sure those, those young people with disabilities are assessed. But mm. number two is also the things that we did right during the COVID. There was a lot of good things that we, we remember. Well. Yeah, that, that we remember that worked, those. That was good practice. And I take them with important. us. Harry, on solutions <clears throat> and I suppose how people you know, can help themselves right now. Yeah. Uh, what can we do? I think this is really important. I, I, I would really pick out a couple of areas. Firstly, we all have to start looking again at our lifestyle. I know it's boring everybody. I know everybody wants to go off and make a cup of tea but it's your lifestyle is actually going to decide how, whether you come out of this well or not. So you've got to, we've got to kind of get back to our basics, make sure we're eating properly, exercising properly, getting enough sleep, eight hours sleep. If you're, as we're, most of us are obsessed with technology, cut back on your technology. Cut back, you don't need it. It's hyping up your brain, it's making you even more. Look at your alcohol intake. Uh, and then I think look at your work-life balance as best you possibly can. And then I think as a group, I, I, a couple of very important points. It's the situation that's abnormal, not us. So stop, stop being hard on ourselves, be kind to ourselves. Uh, the next thing we have to do is we have to start re-socialising again. In other words, reconnecting with all those people that we've lost. Because that's what's making us, the more we all go in to the nuclear family, into the nuclear thing, the more chronic distress we're going to get. So we need to re-establish those things. Get back to doing normal things as best we can. It's going to take us all about six to 12 months to gradually crawl our way out of this hole and get, but we will do it, but we have to start with all these simple, simple basics. That's how you manage. There's no big bang here. There's no magic thing. It, 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 it took a long time. time to get into this but mess and it's going to, to take a little bit of time to get out. But if we do all those things, we will get there.